Hi, welcome to the National Credit Stories Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to my show again online here in Singapore. And uh, folks, uh, today we have a very special guest uh, with us, and it's none other than the Reverend Raina Omeda. Uh, she is actually the senior pastor uh, of Third Day Worship Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, uh, alongside her husband, Reverend Charles uh, Omeda, and also uh, she happens to have a master's uh, d degree in professional counseling. Now, she's going to release a new book called Fit for Your Assignment, uh, which will be released in May 6, 2014, this year. And folks, uh, for those who are wondering, how can I get this book? Well, you can place an order on Amazon.com or at your nearest uh, bookstore around the world. Uh, now, Reverend uh, Reina, tell us more about this book, Fit for Your Assignment. You know, uh, why do you choose to write this book? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, this book came as a consequence of my own self-revelation um, and my own self-confrontation. I, I say that God met me um, at a crossroad and uh, would not let me go. Uh, I, was, I have been ministering for many years and uh, been very busy. And I think um, that I, like a lot of people, um, are uh, being demanded of a lot of things. And we run, run, run. And uh, the Lord put brakes on me and said to me at one point, you have been doing so much for everybody else, but you have neglected self. And uh, so pretty much told me you are a little out of control. You have no self-control for some things and I can't move you past where you're at. And I believe that that was kind of what catapulted me into writing this book. Um, I really felt that this was not just something that I was going through, but the Lord impressed in my spirit that, like me, there were a lot of leaders, pastors, um, people in the public eye that are very busy running and have neglected uh, their spirit, their soul, and their mind along the way. In essence, we get a little lost um, in the demands clamoring for attention get the best of us. Now, we have a question uh that's coming in uh, that we have received recently uh, from Southeast Asia. And the question is coming in actually from Brunei, and that is uh, a, a very small bookstore owner would like to ask this question, and her name is Sally. And, and her question is, uh, Dear Reverend uh, Reina, uh, your book fit for assignment. Tell us, you know, uh, who is it target to and whom are you trying to address uh, this book for? Uh, is it uh, is it for busy executives and le and leaders uh, of the church, uh, and 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 why uh, why do you choose uh, you know uh, the title fit for assignment? Well, I believe that this book is targeted to everybody who has a heartbeat, um, everybody who has a spirit, a soul, and a mind. Um, and the reason I chose fit for my assignment is I believe we all have an assignment. We all have something that God has placed in us, whether we are parents, teachers, professionals, we have something that God has entrusted in our care. Uh, in that, then there's also, we operate based on how we are internally focused. And, uh, if our spirit is not aligned, then consequently, our soul is affected and our bodies react physically. So a fit for my assignment, it goes beyond a diet, goes beyond um, a size, because I believe we all come in all different shapes and sizes. I don't want to limit it to that. I believe that fit for my assignment is being fit uh, internally first. Our spirit has to be aligned with God. There needs to be a level of peace, of soundness. Uh, as a consequence, then our souls uh, are healthy, where our souls are, our emotions, uh, uh, how we feel, how we react to things. Uh, so if if we are spiritually in a chaos, then when life happens, our emotions react in a different way. Um, and that affects everything we do. That can affect us as parents, that can affect us as professionals, but most importantly, that will affect how far we can go with what God has given us. And I think that we need to really understand that God wants us to live 
victoriously. I, I think we have forgotten passion. Um, and also we have forgotten to understand that we are human beings with feelings and emotions. And in the book, I impressed a, a, a point, uh, two leaders and two pastors, because I am a pastor. So I come from that platform and I speak about being permission to be human, permission to, to understand that depression will come, that life happens, that we will have failures and that it's okay to be transparent. It's okay to let somebody know. We need to find a safe place to go to, or we are going to be unproductive leaders and with aborted assignments. So the book is for anybody that understands that they have some a greater calling. They have a calling in their lives and they want to be their best at it. Hmm. Interesting that you brought up about the issue of calling, you know. Um, but before we touch on that, uh, how long did it take you to write this book, Fit for Your Assignment? Well, I, the, the Lord dealt with me for a good year with myself. I had to uh, go through some changes uh, and the Lord dealt with me. And so there had to be a level of growth. Uh, uh, the concept came right away. Um, I speak in the book that when you... Uh, the book has four core principles that are important. It's conviction, confrontation, revelation, and transformation. And conviction was when I understood there is a greater calling over your life, but you're not where you need to be. Um, that's when it started. Uh, in the Lord was developing that message as I was living it. Um, so, and then from there, I had to confront some issues. And I, the confrontation is that face-to-face -face encounter with self, with God, and an understanding of, you know what, the light, the light switch went on, everything in the room is scattered, and you can't just walk through the rubble. You have to begin to pick up and throw away what needs to throw away and keep what, what you can keep and you can work through. Um, and then after that, th then there was the revelation of, I, you were obedient to me. You heard my voice. You heeded the fact that you understood that you fall short. And as a consequence, I am going now to accelerate you. Your assignment will become greater. In other words, obedience leads to promotion. And the transformation then occurred. And after that year, uh, then I began to, to write. So it took about a good year uh, to develop and write it. Um, interviews people. I did a lot of conversations through um, Facebook groups, um, met a lot of wonderful people, leaders, teachers, uh, preachers, and uh, found out that there is a large community of people that have been going through this and that have been simply living um, and have conformed to where they were at. And I believe that this book uh, and the concept of it began to shake a little bit of the foundations and provoked people to look at their lives and go, there's got to be something greater for me. I, I, I can't just be a mom. I got to be a great mom. Um, I can't just be a, a leader. I have to be a wonderful leader. But without, without uh, bringing in so much weight on you, just understanding that what you live over every day, if you're passionate, if you're spiritually aligned, it comes very automatic because it's, it's just being led by the Lord. It, it is who you are. And we're all meant to live victoriously. Amen to that. And speaking about living a victorious life, uh, a question coming in from Philippines, and that is, uh, dear uh, Reverend Reina Omeda, uh, have you faced failures in your life? Uh, you know, since you know you have started this church, and but before that, as a young pastor or a young leader, you know, um, what what what? Can you teach us, you know, in trying to establish ourselves uh, to be fit for our assignment as young pastors? Well, uh, the answer to that is yes. I believe that failure is inevitable. I think we all uh, have failures in our life. And I believe that failure is um, an opportunity for a revelation. I believe that failure will allow us to look at self to look at maybe what went wrong. 
Um, and I think the failure, we have to look at it as, well, did I fail because somebody failed me? Or how do I overcome not feeling guilty over my failure or beating myself up? Uh, I have faced lots of failures as a young pastor. Um, and when I first started, it, you know, it was a little difficult. Uh, but I got through it. And I believe the way I got through it was that every day I made a conscious choice of how I was going to confront failure. And the way I confronted failure was, you know what, I'm gonna learn from this. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm gonna be the best that I can be and live victoriously. I think that you gotta look at failure and say, did I do the best that I could do? Did I use all my resources or did I not give it my best effort? I think when failure comes, it is an opportunity for self-reflection and self-revelation and we can't get stuck there so rather than being afraid of failure i think we need to look at failure as a stepping a step to move further in what god has for us a question from japan uh, dear uh, reverend rainer omeda please tell us how do you identify uh good leaders in your church that will be fit for their assignment how do you identify? Because uh, according to the catalog, it says that you you actually uh, impose an inspiring 30-day challenge. Uh, have you done that in your church? I have. There's a lot of people that have um, embraced the 30-day challenge. I think there needs to be great leaders have a great want and desire. Great leaders um, are different. It goes beyond a title. It goes beyond, I think we look at people who are well-educated, and of course that is important, but I think we miss the mark sometimes. We, are, we look at titles and we, we kind of bypass a person with wonderful traits and qualities. So a great leader has passion, uh, a great leader has a desire to become better, and a great leader is humble in understanding that the leader is not self-sufficient, but dependent on God. And I believe that when a leader understands that what we have and the giftings in us are not so much by our own means, but a gift from God, and that that is our source of strength, then these leaders can achieve uh, many things. And a lot of the people have done the 30-day challenge and they have committed to, to it. Um, and a lot, and a few, a lot of them have kind of stopped along the way. Um, but those that have finished it have sent a great message to those that stopped along the way um, in saying, if I've done it, you can too. And as a consequence, those leaders that have not completed it have picked up and, and moved along and completed it. So I always tell them, you know, we can fall, we may go halfway, but every day is a new day to start over. What will be the one of the uh, main points of overcoming conflicts uh, within, them, within themselves uh, as they prepare themselves for or being fit for their assignment. This is a question from uh, from Malaysia. Uh, how do you how do you overcome conflicts? Uh, again, uh, we all have them. We all have conflicts. I believe the the way to overcome conflict is to confront them. This is the key of this book. If you have a chaotic spirit, conflict looks like a large monster. It is not part of your life. It is an interruption. If your spirit is aligned, then you know that in this world, we will have persecution. In this world, we will have conflict. And when your spirit and your soul are aligned, the manner in which you see conflict is very different because now you're seeing it through the lens of scripture, to the lens of saying, well, when I am weak, I am strong. So conflict, you need to confront it. You need to confront it with a spirit that is going to be able to provide direction, sound direction. So this is why I impress this book on fit for your assignment, because assignments do bring conflict. Assignments do bring failures, but alignment will cause you to see these things in a manner 
where you won't fall apart. Rather, you will end victoriously. Now, that's not to say that you may not go through a process of, a, of pain or, or challenges. You will go through them. But there's something about going through challenges, knowing that God is with you, knowing that you have a support system, knowing that you can be human and transparent, and going through it, not understanding, not pinpointing, not naming the emotions that you are feeling. So it is confronting, it is understanding how you are inside, and it is understanding the God that you serve as well. We have a question uh, from Cambodia, and that is, uh, Dear Reverend Reina Omida, uh, what are the uh, trends today that you see, toxic habits and patterns? Uh, what sort of uh, toxic habits and patterns do you see today? Could you name us three toxic habits and patterns that you see in church and how uh, best can we deal with them? Well, I think we, the church lacks transparency. That is big for me. Um, I believe that we are, there, are, there is this demand and press on us that we cannot display too much emotion or we are not spiritual enough. Uh, and that is killing the church. That is killing leaders. And that is, and I mean, in the spirit and yes, uh, literally as well, um, I, the reports keep coming in. It's all over the news. Uh, the suicide rate among pastors, uh, there's a lot of mental illness that is in the church, number two, that is not being addressed. Um, and there are a lot of religious and distorted disorders, what I would call them. Um, and uh, there's a lot of running and a lot of uh, chaos uh, in the church. And I believe that we need to begin to speak about these issues. I think we need to really look internally before we judge externally and look at ourselves and say, because there is a, a new generation that is growing, for coming forth, and there's a lot of research that says that our, this new young generation don't want anything to do with church. They want to have they want to start their own church in homes um, because of what they see. Uh, I wish more pastors would stand in the pulpit and discuss how they get through issues, how they get through problems, that, that they need prayer, uh, that they, they need a support system. Um, I don't think it makes you less of a leader or less relevant. Um, yes, there is caution how we bring it forth. There is caution in the amount of information we present to a congregation. But I don't think that it should be absolutely exclusive to not saying anything. So lack of transparency, um, not addressing certain mental illnesses in the church, uh, rebuking depression rather than uh, than looking at depression as an illness, mm -hmm. uh, rather than you know laying hands on somebody and saying we're going to rebuke that. Um, and, and I believe that may come as a consequence of just not knowing enough. So uh, transparency, uh, mental illness, and a lot of um, religious disorders that really there is no foundation or explanation for. Um, and it's affecting the church. So we need to have conversations about this and, and leaders need to be more transparent to their congregation as well. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. And so now we're going, we're going to come to the last part of it. And that is uh, the, the question uh, from Singapore. And that is, uh, dear Reverend Reina Omeda, uh, tell us, you know, uh, you you have come, you know, you if do you have any plans, uh, or you know, to to elevate uh, this issue of fit for assignment? Do, is there a website where we can go to for more information? Absolutely, um, you can go to reinaomeda.com, uh, the website. Also, there is a Facebook page, uh, fit for your assignment, Reina Omeda. Um, and that there's a lot of information there, uh, information on the book. I also have uh, a secret group on Facebook for women um, 
where there's a lot of women coming in uh, and discussing uh, issues privately and a fit for your assignment a Facebook group for men as well, where men are also coming in and uh, have a place and a, a safe place to, to talk about maybe some things that they may be going through that normally they would not share with others. And perhaps maybe next time you will be telling me fit for your assignment for children. Or, you know, that, that, that's, that's, I, I truly believe that everybody needs to be fit, including children and our, our young generation as well. The teenagers. That's absolutely amazing. You have an all rounded uh, program. So, uh, Reverend Rainer Omeda, thank you for joining us here at the National Credit's Choice. And, folks, please do place an order uh, with Amazon.com or at your nearest uh, bookstore uh, near you around the world. And uh, before we actually go, um, you know, Reverend Rainer, do you have any advice uh, for aspiring uh, leaders and pastors, you know, uh, growing in the Lord and trying to prepare themselves and be effective, uh, you know, in their leadership to to the congregation. What will be the three key advice you will give them? Uh, have a solid relationship with the Lord. Know your calling, and take care of yourself. If you can take good care of yourself. Uh, then you will take care of everything else effectively. So self-care is huge. Your relationship with the Lord, um, know what your calling is and uh, take care of yourself. The word of the Lord says that um, he, he calls us to be in good health so that our soul may prosper. And that is very important. And it's, it's God's heart uh, and desire for us. Well, thank you so much, Reverend Rainer, for that advice. Thank and before you. and before we go, let, let me pray for you and for yes. and as well as for this wonderful program and the book launch. Thank you. Lord, I pray for Reverend Rainer Almeida uh, for this wonderful book, Fit for Your Assignment, and it is truly that you have ordained her to write this book and publish this book to make this available to everybody around the world. I pray that you they, they will find life and they are able to grow and know more of you as they as they you know as they grow and prepare themselves for your coming i pray all this in jesus name amen amen thank you have a good day